guys, the point of today's video is self-awareness. That's what we do here at Mademoiselle Venus. We identify who we are and who we're on a date with. And most importantly, if the person sitting opposite us on that first date deserves our time and attention. So let me give you a primer on personality. Let's tap our ego. Let's identify some of the parts that make us. Our personality is made of many invisible parts. There are thoughts, emotions, beliefs and tendencies. What's visible to an outsider is the action that we take and they tend to form an opinion of us based on these actions and while our stereotypes are born. For example, INFPs love to cry, ISFJs are doormats, ESFPs love to echo your thoughts back at you while claiming these thoughts to be their original thought and ESTPs are serial cheaters. Now according to type theory and there are many systems such as Jung's analytical psychology, socionics and the Myers-Briggs system, each of us is unique. We have a unique personality but there are also similarities that we share with others. For example, we could have had different life circumstances, different uh, circumstances in which we grew up, the way we were nurtured. But when it comes to making a decision, we could make a decision based on a similar line of thought, a similar logical point of view or a similar sentiment that we share with somebody else. So there are similarities in our differences and there are differences in our similarities. It's like saying we have a face, a mouth, two eyes and a nose and two ears. But of course, all of us are going to have different eyes, a different nose, a different mouth and different ears. How about we put everyone who has round eyes in one group? And of course, within that group, some of us are going to have green eyes, some blue, some brown. There are many variations. And so this is what the Myers-Briggs system does. It helps us identify the group that we belong to. But this group doesn't define us entirely. It defines some of us, not all of us. So when we talk about our personalities, what parts of our personalities are we considering while comparing them to the others? What are these similarities and differences we're talking about? That's the question we have to tackle and that's when the concept of cognitive function takes birth. So analytical psychology tells us that we need a mental process or a framework to get through our day-to-day -day life. So our day-to-day -day involves a set of activities. That's our routine. So to perform these activities, we need to go and gather information. There is a process going on here where we go out there and get the information that we need. And once we get the information, we need to make a decision. So there's a certain style or a tendency that governs us in the way we gather this information and the way we make this decision. And this is what we're paying attention to when we find similarities and differences amongst ourselves. For example, I wake up in the morning, I start working and suddenly I realize I'm hungry. Now I head over to the kitchen, open the fridge and check for leftovers and I don't find anything. And then I go over to my pantry and do a quick scan of what's available to me. And then on the spot, I make a decision to choose steel cut oats over ready to eat breakfast cereal because that's healthy. Now, this is how I approach a situation. I just fall into it and I figure out what needs to be done. Well, somebody else could have a more planned approach where they would have decided the previous night what they were going to have for breakfast in the morning and they would have ordered the ingredients that need to go into making that dish. This is just one of the tendencies that the Myers-Briggs system likes to study and classify whether someone's planned or someone is more spontaneous. Now, this is just one of the tendencies. There are also other tendencies that these personality theories study. For example, some of us may prefer to stay right in the moment, absorb the sights, the smells and the sounds, whereas others could just prefer to drift away into the past or think of how their life could have been. Now, there are patterns to our tendencies, which we also call cognitive functions. And there are four types of cognitive functions which are opposites of each other. There's sensing, intuition, thinking and feeling. Now, if you want to get into the weeds of what these processes 
actually mean please check my previous lecture and i'm going to start this series with the first cognitive function introverted sensing which is denoted by si so be sure to watch this video when it comes out all right folks i hope this video helped you understand what cognitive functions really are and i'm going to do a deep dive in the subsequent videos until then don't get complacent. Love you, love me, love Mademoiselle Venus.